Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And it's Jeremy from Tested. Today we have a special treat for you guys. Uh, we have a whole setup here with the Vive headset, mm -hmm. uh, but we're not gonna be talking about the headset or these controllers. Or even the Pro Audio Strap. Or your Pro Audio Strap, which is pretty good. Uh, we have a special guest that's gonna bring a new piece of hardware. Let's bring him right now. It's FooVR's Will Smith, Hi, formerly of Tested. I'm Will from Foo. <laughs> <laughs> Will's here because uh, one of the reasons we want to learn more about Foo, what you've been doing the past few years, and also, oh my God, those it? Those are it. <sighs> this is so 2016, isn't it? Whoa. It's 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 old technology, Jeremy. I'm gonna put these down. We don't talk about those anymore. Actually, those are still really good. We use them all the time. That's what <laughs> we use are. mainly. But uh, the folks at Valve were kind enough to send us some Knuckles prototypes to use for an upcoming project, which I sadly can't talk about right now. But we'll be uh, talking about in uh, two and a half, three weeks, maybe around September 6th, perhaps. If you want to follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash willsmith, I'll let you know. But these are the new Valve Knuckles controllers. Yes. That they unveiled last year, actually, at a talk, and then they started to show up in developers' hands. Yeah. What do you think? Um, I, I'm really impressed. Like, they solved the problems that I had with the wand. Like, I love the Oculus Touch controllers because it's a definite way to hold them. They have the grip button and the trigger button separately. The grip button's actually usable on the touch controllers, which is important. Right. And, um, and like, it's just, a, it's just a better controller design than the wands mm -hmm. for what we do. Like, we need a definite hand position. Like, grip ergonomics is one thing. One of the reasons, like you said, I think the Oculus Touch controllers are more ergonomic than the, the Vive controllers, maybe less versatile in mm -hmm. how, you, how you can hold them, is because your resting position of your hand is basically that grip. It's almost like the... It's, the, it's the neutral position. Very neutral. neutral pose is what right. they call it. Yeah. But the Knuckles controller, which isn't... This is not HTC. This is still Valve experimentation. Yeah. Uh, lets you have a controller in your hand without gripping it mm -hmm. at all. That's kind of the magic. So yeah, there's a neoprene there's a neoprene sleeve that you kind of put your hand between that and the controller. And then the other magic part about this is that the controller, the back of the surface of the controller is capacitive. So that means it can detect when your fingers are on it with a great deal of sensitivity. Uh, in the same way that if you put your palm on your iPad screen, your phone screen, it'll be able to tell that there's a bunch of fingers there. So as far as the strap goes, I noticed mm -hmm. that there's a tensioning. That's uh, just to tighten here. it until it's comfortable. And you don't ever have to do that again? I, I mean, you, if you put it on somebody with tiny hands, maybe? It's elastic though, so you yeah. can easily go in and off. I, I adjusted cool. it once and haven't adjusted it since. That's interesting. It's yeah. interesting to me because the way I have it right now, I'm not gripping at all. It really mm -hmm. is the tension. I feel most of that tension on the bottom part by my by my pinky. So you might be a little too tight. You want it to be kind of even across the top of your knuckles, mm. and you want to ride the, at least what I found is the best, is to ride the strap across the top of your knuckles. And you said there are capacitive sensors along all, this grip here. All along the inside edge here, yeah. Which they, in the software, divide, I believe, into three segments for each three of your fingers. And, and so it calibrates that each time you put it on. So when you put the controllers in your hand, ah. you grip them and you release, and you grip and you release, and you grip and you release three or four times until the fingers start tracking correctly or, or close to it. You mm -hmm. know, when you first put them on, you'll see gnarled finger representations and they're all over the place. And then, then it, it dials it in as you as you do that tap and release and it figures out which fingers are which. So with the touch controller, with the Oculus touch controller, these two fingers would never be tracked no. in any no. way, shape, or form. Right. But no. they are analog because it is a, a button that you depress. Well, this one would be a button. Right. right? Oh, but right, that, right. But that's you're, it. You're well, right. pinking your, right. your, uh, your ring. Uh, the ring, mm -hmm. ring finger is not analog on the Oculus touch controller. So no, there's it? nothing. Uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's just, just I mean, sorry, the middle finger is just... It is. No, it's analog. It's analog. Okay. Yeah. But so it's capacitive when you touch it, and then it's analog going forward. Oh, okay. I guess with these three, it's it's almost analog the entire travel. See, I thought it was just capacitive when you touch, and then it, it moves in when you pull the trigger. Oh, uh, no, you can have a you mid grab. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but then also the top is a little different. Like, there is button parity between mm -hmm. this and your standard Vive controller. You know, there is a touchpad here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit different shaped. So the way the, 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 let's see, the way the buttons work is the round one is the Steam button, the one that pops up the Steam menu. Uh, the one on the inside edge, you know, on your right hand, it's your mm -hmm. left left button, and your left hand, it's your right button, is the like uh, grip button, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then the one on the outside edge is the is the the button that's above the pad. It's like the one that everybody uses right. for menus or weapon selectors like or in -game whatever. Menus. In game menus, yeah. yeah. Um, but then the circle pad is totally redesigned. So it's it's the same, more or less the same surface area, but it's much deeper. It's a much deeper curve. Uh, than the than the it's a bowl rather than like a disc mm. is what I would say on the on the traditional wand, mm -hmm. um, and of course you know these are prototypes the 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 final design may change, 
Uh, they're, you know, they're not committing to anything yet. They're just putting these out there. I think one of the things that they learned from the initial wand design is that how they think people are going to use them. And, and this is also new, that how people use this stuff in the real world versus how you think it's... You, you can't design for how people are going to use it because nobody knows how they're going to use it yet. You, I, ha you have to try stuff. I can say I, I like that this is now a unique button, the actual home or the Steam VR yeah. button, because I would always forget, is it the top or the bottom one in game? And I was always flip flop back. Yeah, this is much better button placement. You get one additional button. Also, of course, there are plenty of the sensors mm -hmm. around the controller, so you're not going to get occlusion. I like, like that it wraps. Or something. I mean, and you never really hit the back of your hand in VR. It's mostly the palm. Um, and then, um, and then there's of course the trigger, which which is ergonomic it's and has a two, two stage, stage yeah. two stage trigger, and it's uh, capacitive as well on the on the touch mm -hmm. on the front. Very uh, the cool. top buttons, I believe, are as well. I'm not sure about the face surface, but I would expect that to be in the final. You mm. know, speaking as someone who ha literally has a gash in my drywall about that big from a friend who was playing something, and yeah. Out went the Vive controller across the room. Uh, this is the killer it's, app. It's hard for <laughs> the throw these. Like I knocked my watch off a while ago, and I was. You know, shadow boxing. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I, my watch band off. fell off. It's not going right. to come I'm off. I'm like, throwing. Right? Nope, yeah. not coming off. I love how crazy you are with my <laughs> one of a kind prototype controller there. Uh, but you've been using and you've implemented this in a version of Foo. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what we're going to do is we're going to put on some headsets and jump into a Foo environment you've created to talk about what you've been working on for the past two years. Excellent. You guys ready to jump in? Yeah, let's jump. All right, one, two, three. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> We're, Wait a we're minute. In, we're, we're in a virtual world now. Something's wrong with my model. <laughs> What's wrong? Wait. Did you do something wrong with your hair, Jeremy? I look a little funny. Dude, you look awesome. Okay. You look so cool. So, uh, Will is on the far right. I'm Jeremy, the tall me. Uh, wearing, uh, using Will's model is in the middle. And I'm here on the right with a uh, pixelated or tessellated version of me, a low poly version. Uh, this is this is Foos, all right? Yeah, this is, this, well, this is one of the things we built. So uh, for the last year, uh, well, we started out doing just VR recorded shows, right? Shows that happen in VR that you can watch in VR. Turns out there's not a lot of headsets on the market and we, like, making money is nice. So um, we started doing 2D animation. We did a, the first thing with Adult Swim earlier this year in January. We have some really exciting stuff to come up, uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks that I can't really talk about right now. This is so weird. We're making live, we make live cartoons. That's the takeaway. We're using the Foo animation to make guys that look like me and look like Jeremy and look like Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force, and we can animate them live. So we put a performer in. Instead of having to do a bunch of 2D animation, I think you lost an arm there, Jeremy, uh, then we can, uh, we can go in and do things that are, that are impossible in traditional animation, like live call-in shows or uh, you know putting characters in places that you wouldn't expect to see them and all sorts of other <laughs> interesting things like that. So something that's interesting, people should know, because we're going to switch between this virtual camera and the live camera, is that our relative space, mm -hmm. like you are actually right there in the real world, and Jeremy's actually right there in the world. If you guys, yeah, there you go. I just touched Jeremy. Um, is that like part of the Foo formula? Is is that what you're going for? Could, could it be done remotely? Well, so you could do it remotely. We've recorded some pilots where one of the performers was in LA and one of them was uh, on the East Coast. Uh, we've... If you want to do something like live on stage or in a live context like we're doing right now, then then doing it where we're all in the same physical space and, and virtual space makes a lot of sense. But there are complications because, for example, when I get over close to Jeremy, then yep. his lips will start flapping, or maybe not. Because you're hitting my microphone. Because I'm hitting his mic. Um, are my lips flapping? Is my yeah, animation yeah. going? They okay, totally. Jeremy's isn't, so he must have, his mic must be low. Are you sure? Checking one, two? I don't see you moving right. right now, but your eyes are tracking nicely. But we do all, all the animation procedurally. So the, this is the interesting thing about what we built, is all of the data that we're getting to animate these bodies it comes off of two hands and the head that you get from the Vive. Right. Um, we can add other things, like we have some uh, HTC tracker pucks that we can put on feet and back and stuff like that to get more data and do a little bit better uh, job with the, the below the waist. Uh, but for the most part, we with machine learning and IK and all sorts of terrifying math, we can we can animate a believable human out of just three three count them three. Oop, can I do it? Three points of data. <laughs> three. So That's can it. we talk about that for a second? Yeah. We we are using the knuckles controllers. So yeah. In Foo, what was it like to actually incorporate this hardware into your game? Well, um, Valve sent some controllers to us, and then I went to FedEx and sent one of the controllers that he sent to us to my lead dev in New Mexico. Yep. And then like two days later, it was working. So. Um, <laughs> so it takes two days. No, it it was um uh so Andre Infante, who's our lead dev. 
uh, spent a couple of hours working on it and got it up relatively quickly. Now, um, we have to change, like you'll notice with my avatar especially, there's some stuff that changes. And Norm, Norm is using the old ones, as you can see. Uh, Jeremy and I are both using Knuckles. And basically, because there's a definite position that you hold the knuckles, you know, where it's where it's always in the same orientation on your hand, yep. then then we have to change the way the math works that defines what the the angle on the hands is. But other than that, it's all more or less the same. And this is a more consistent angle than you were getting from the original wands. Yeah, too, with, right? with the wands, if you look how Norm's holding the wands, are you, are you don't don't put your hands behind your back. Also, for whatever you do, math math cries when you put your hands behind your back. But yeah, you can hold the wands in different ways. You can hold them like a baseball bat. You can hold them like a golf club. You can hold them like mm -hmm. a Harry Potter style magic wand. And um, this, there's only really one correct way to hold the, the, the controllers. And that matters because you're doing these, what's called inverse kinematics in order to determine where all the body parts are yes. based on only three tracking points. So we, well, I mean, we use inverse kinematics, we use some machine learning, we use a bunch of other stuff. We did mm -hmm. a GDC talk about it, or VRDC talk earlier this year that explains a little bit more about how it works. Um, but the upshot is that, yeah, the, 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 the relationship between the position of your hand, the orientation of your wrist, the orientation of your elbow and shoulder is much easier to predict if you know how people are holding the controllers. Interesting. Huh. And so with these knuckles controllers, I can actually pull one finger out, two fingers out. I can make obscene mm -hmm. gestures. Whoa. You can. I already did that. It's. Whoa. I love you guys. I don't really mean this. So because the uh, what you're getting is capacitive sensors, like mm -hmm. three points of on cap sense, your middle finger your pinky, uh, ring finger and your pinky, um, how are you getting analog? That's, um, yeah, that's interesting, isn't well, it? So the, the back of the controller is capacitive, so that means that it can detect when your finger first hits it at the lowest knuckle to your palm, as well as when the tip of your finger wraps all the way around, and that means that you can infer the position of the hand. You're not measuring directly, but you're, you know, you, that's why when you first put the controllers on, or when you change your, your uh, when you wiggle them around a little bit, you have to kind of grip in and out a few times, yeah. and you just keep doing that until the fingers look right. I have to say, the amount of of granularity that you get about where fingers are is better than I expected it would be. Right, hmm. like, look, you can... You and that's can, without calibration on your end, Well, I, I've opened my hands at least three times, and that's all it takes, right? Yeah, it, 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 it constantly is calibrating and refining and uh. inferring. And a lot of that stuff happens on the driver level. What, what we've built here is our quickest, dirtiest implementation. You know, it's literally Andre working on it for a few hours over a couple of days. And um, there's definitely room for refinement. There's more information we can infer from what we're getting from the controllers. And hmm. frankly, these models, my model wasn't really built to be rigged. Uh, I mean, we put bones in the fingers so that we can animate them individually, but, but there are things that we would change if we were doing it from scratch right now. Jeremy, when you release the knuckles controller so you're not actively gripping it, yeah. what is your natural pose? Like, put it on your side, is it? Like that. Okay, and you're not holding on right now, no. you're gripping at all. Nope. You're just, and, oh, it looks, looks pretty natural. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's pretty much how I stand. I would guess, especially if I was in an Old West film. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, the, our characters are a little bow-legged. We do that so that we avoid con, uh, collision of the legs when they cross over in front of each other. Um, it's just, a, it, was, it was an artistic choice uh, uh, kind of directed by uh, the necessities of the engine. So what you've built into your tool well, including mm -hmm. like these models, the, your IK, but also the way we're filming this is a camera system. Yeah, so that, that's the other part of this. If you want to make 2D content, you need a way to get 2D content back out. And the easiest way to do that is to give people a camera, right? So uh, the, the version of the camera that Gunther is controlling right now is actually a drone camera. It models a drone camera. And he's flying it around Ooh. with an Xbox uh, One controller. Uh, and it works just like a, like basically I, I'm, we modeled it off the Phantom 2 controls. So it's uh, left stick is uh, up and down, uh, 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 pan left and right. And then right stick is forward, backwards, left, right, strafe. Right. Uh, and then you can press A to switch from uh, up and down on the left stick to tilt. Mm. Uh, and we can also do roll, which is uh, discomforting. And we have zoom on this, because you know it turns out there's no optics, it's all virtual. So we just change the FOV on the camera dynamically when you zoom in and out. So obviously that gives you camera control with mm -hmm. simply a gamepad, no tracking required, but you also have the ability to track using a track controller. Yeah, so we also built a rig that lets us put like a, a Vibe controller or a HTC tracker on just a shoulder mounted rig, and we can mount that so that a camera person can get in the space and, and shoot directly up in your face. You get handheld, uh, handheld tracking and all the stuff that comes with that.
We can motion smooth that out. We could build a, um, one of the people we've, we've been talking to wants a dolly so that you can dolly across. Oh, and so you lay it on that. tracks or something? Yeah, like so that? we lay it on tracks. That's cool. Um, I mean, we, would, we wouldn't actually put the real tracks there. We would place them in the world and plan out those shots in advance. Better, better than real world photography. Exactly. Um, we've done things like put a green screen in. So when we did the Carl thing, uh, the Aquatine, uh, it's, it's pigskin prognost prognostifications from the pigskin wizard, W-Y-Z-Z-A-R-D, if you want to check that out. <laughs> Uh, and you can see, uh, we, we basically built a green screen for him so they can superimpose right, right. him on anything. So like it would be a virtual avatar, yep. but instead of this cartoonish living room environment, it's flat green walls? That's exactly right. Gunther, if you press G on your keyboard, that might just pop up, I'm not sure. No, did it? It made the camera green. It made the camera green. <laughs> uh, so that's the other thing that's worth mentioning. We can put as many cameras in as you want. Ah. Um, so we can do like a traditional, we can shoot like a traditional four camera sitcom style where we have four cameras, you know, uh, uh, main conversation, secondary conversation wide, uh, two thirds, uh, all that kind of stuff is possible. But then you can actually do the post later, right? Well, you, you can choose what angles you want later. You don't have to do all that. You can time. do that as well. Um, you can record an engine just like we do with VR. You can mm -hmm. fly the cameras around. You can record off of that and post if you want. You can also do like a live mix. So. Sure. Um, one of the things that we found is that you, like, one of the keys to making this work for people is fitting it into their existing content pipeline. So, uh, so for example, we uh, let you hook up to, say, a TriCaster. You hook up your capture computers, whether it's one that's a, that's a 1080p machine or two that are 1080p machines or one that's a 4K machine that splits into four 1080p quads. Mm -hmm. We have a virtual camera in each of the quads. And then they pipe that into a normal video mixer and they can handle it just like they would uh, you know, an episode of The Tonight Show or uh, your live 30 Rocks or that's uh, Sound weird. Music or whatever. Virtual performance capture Pretty much. Uh, with these virtual avatars and now with the precision of, of individual finger movements well, and composited the, into any type of video. And the benefit of doing the virtual performers in this context instead of, say, putting them in a mocap suit with the ping pong balls and, and all that stuff is that here the performers can actually see the other performers as they're going to be. You know, if we scale somebody up or down, they'll be the right size. If they're picking up a prop, if they're interacting with something, then they can, you know, use it in the space. Oops, wrong button. I don't know which button is it. It's this one. So, you know, we, and we can do things like that are impossible in the real world, like right in space. You can't grab it here, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but, you know, you can, you know, oh, wrong, oh, I just teleported oh. again. Damnation. Will has left the building. Yep, I'm over here. I'm back. <laughs> you know, I'm the man Ooh. in the box. This is my favorite thing to do when you put new people in VR, by the way, is tell them to draw a box yeah. and watch them draw a 2D projection of a box. <laughs> right. That's did I drop the chalk? Yeah, I did. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. That's what we've done. Knuckles is another part of what we're doing. I mean, it's obviously gives us a lot more fidelity and control over the animation. Uh, lets us do things. I mean, we can programmatically pick this up. I think this chalk looks okay. You can grab it from my hands if you want, Jeremy. Just squeeze the trigger. It's not mapped to hands. How yet. do I draw? Uh, you draw by uh, pressing the left button. The, it's your right hand. The left button. There you go. Cool. Do you find that using Knuckles, it's, um, it's more comfortable? Like you, wow. You're using it for longer periods than, than you would be grabbing, a, a holding you know, one of these wands controllers? Um, it, it's, uh, I haven't noticed that. The battery life in the Knuckles prototypes is a little bit lower than the wands. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, it's nice to not have to worry about dropping the controller and not have to always have, have it in your hands. And this way you can leave your hands free. And like once you get used to having your hands free, you can make more natural gestures. There's a football somewhere in here. I don't know where it went. It How do I move my spiral? Off. Uh, pick up the chalk again and then press the circle pad. The chalk has left the building. I'll go get the chalk. Oh, I think I knocked the camera down. <laughs> oh, did you throw it at the camera? Yeah, I did. That's funny. I'm going to clip through you guys for a sec. It's, oh, I got it. It's oh, it went really away, it went surreal. Away. I mean, the, the fact that... It like, seriously is. Like, actually looking at the camera, you, the tessellation sort of blends into a real photographic image, and I feel like I'm watching television norm over there. Right. I mean, that's the thing is you get, you, well, and that camera's far away, so we're dealing with resolution limits, but like. But the human motion is there, which is enough to create a sense of realism. Exactly right. And what we're seeing in the headset, which you guys can't see, is a box that looks like a preview of, it's a, basically a preview of what Gunther sees on his monitor. So, um, you know, we're able to look at that and we can tell when the animation's getting funky. When you do something nightmarish, like put your hands behind you and like weird melty things happen or if you're clipping through your body or whatever, you, you can correct that. The performance can correct that on the fly, uh, which we very quickly learned was an important thing. One of the things that you first demoed with Foo was uh, incorporating the Firewatch game assets mm -hmm. into your engine. Is that something you're still doing? Is that a 
I imagine the voice process. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, yeah, we're definitely still doing that. We've, we're still, we still have episodes of the Kickstarter to fulfill. We're super late, and I'm sorry. It turns out we uh, we didn't really anticipate how long it was going to take us to do things like track down horrible bugs and and things like that. Um, but we've recorded. We have two more episodes of the Foo Show in the can that are ready to go. Uh, one is uh, features Total War Warhammer Two. And uh, we go inside, we get human scale with Warhammer dragons and lizard men and characters. It's really awesome. The other one is even more incredible. We go and talk to a, a, a biochemist, a biophysical chemist who builds nanomachines out of DNA named Sean Douglas. And we go full powers of 10. We start out in his lab and we get smaller and get smaller and get smaller and get smaller until we're standing someplace that people have never been before. So I think you'll be really excited by that. And you get to a little bit better understanding of how and why you might want to build nanomachines out of DNA. Very this is cool. an example of where I would love to see eye tracking. You know, yeah. and it's not so much for foveated rendering or fo you know, where it's for mm -hmm. my purposes. It's for your purposes that I can actually feel like I'm with you even more. Well, so we we eye track now. You see, I'm I'm watching you. Norm might be more interesting than you uh, than me to you. But it's all simulated. Well, it turns out simulated is good enough when you can't really look around inside the headset that much. Mm -hmm. So we do um, we do some fairly complex math and we add we make different things in the environment different levels of interesting so that people uh, their eyes behave naturally. Norm's eyes are actually misbehaving right now because he's using an old version of the model. I saw his um, eyes getting bigger and his eyelids flip up instead he blinks up instead of down, which is very disconcerting. <laughs> oh, I um, thought that was cool because it looked like he was expressing himself. <laughs> no, um, so when he when he if he gets loud, his eyebrows will go up. I think. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, those are uh, cues. I, I like that you've cheated the system by identifying things in your world that you know people are going to naturally gravitate toward. Uh, other people, obviously, but thinking, uh, taking things like gestures and also uh, volume. Well, there's a lot of things that are interest that, that that you have to um, mimic in order to make people believable and make people not skeezed out by them. And we're much better off, be better with it now when we're using, say, the 2D avatar that Jeremy and I are wearing than, than your older um, uh, uh, tessellated one. Um, but things like saccades. Saccades are those little tiny infinitesimal movements of your eyes. We're kind of always glancing around even if we're looking at somebody and making right. eye contact. And you have to mimic that or else people get skeezed out. It's uncanny valley territory. Well, well they're Same called reveries. Reveries? Oh. <laughs> if you're a Westworld watcher. <laughs> um, but, but things like the, the, the movements of the fingers. You need to be able to move the fingers a little bit. Even if, there's, even if we're not tracking them with the controllers, we do just a little bit of idle animation on the fingers so that you don't have straight paddle hands because that's something that, again, freaks people out. Yeah. If you talk and your eyebrows don't move, that's really weird. So we add a little bit of eyebrow movement that bounces with the cadence of your voice. Uh, just basic stuff like that. Oh. Tracking issues. So, so is that the, a problem? Is the, tracking an issue? So the, yeah, the tracking issues are the problem we're having here is that the, your lighthouses in the tested office are a little bit lower than I would normally go to put three people in the same space. If you want to get three people in the same space, you really want to shoot down on the on the play area, uh, just so that you don't have uh, occlusion issues. Because right. if say your right hand, which is between Norm and the lighthouse, mm -hmm. uh, then it'll it'll get blocked when it doesn't see either lighthouse. It flies off to the origin, which one seems of to be you somewhere goes in there. between my controller and the lighthouse. Exactly. Oh, Jeremy, how are you feeling after using the Knuckles controller for a bit? Oh, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, I wish that I could see my hands, as, but that's just a matter of the software. So the seeing your hands is something we didn't do with the wands because we couldn't get it to line up one-to-one. -one. And as oh, Norm fun. and I found when we did the, the, um, the Vicon motion tracking thing like three, four years ago now, yeah. It was that was really discomforting when you can't when you when you see your hands in VR and they don't line up with the real hands. Mm -hmm. I think with the knuckles, we're probably going to go back and retry it because it seems like it's a little bit of a better another opportunity to show real hands. Um, I, I'm not about to drop them. That's one thing. Yeah, I think even the amount of time we've been in here, I'm aware I'm holding something. I'm never forgetting the fact that I'm holding these controllers. Mm -hmm. And you are you more relaxed? Is your hand position more relaxed because? You don't have to actively grip. You know, I've, I'm so I'm so used to having to grip controllers that half the time I probably have been gripping them. Yeah, you, it takes a while to break yourself of that habit. Exactly. It but uh, you know, it's nice to be able to let go. And I can imagine playing a game where if I'm going to grab something and physically actually grabbing it rather than just pushing a trigger would have a, a real big effect on the immersion factor. Wow. Well, we're just scratching the surface here, both in how you as a developer are experimenting with these knuckle controllers and how your platform is allowing us to create these these virtual videos of virtual actors, performances 
inside virtual environments. That's yeah. super cool. We're making cartoons that people have never been able to make before uh, without VR, without the game engine technology that we're using. And if you want to find out more, you want to make some cartoons with us, uh, give us a shout. Uh, you can email me at info at foovr.com or just go to foovr.com and there's information there. Super cool, Will. Thanks, yeah. guys. Thanks for Glad coming like by it. and we will see you next time. Whoa! <laughs> we're, Wait a we're minute. In, we're, we're in a virtual world now. Something's wrong with my model. <laughs>